Vanessa girl, it's the new year and a lot's been going on at the top of the year. I know y'all been tweeting me and was like, y'all want to hear my voice on this and the H&M thing and Oprah running for president and so on and so forth. And to be honest, I stayed away from all of that for two reasons. One, I don't like to speak on like the social and political stuff right when it happens. I like to wait a couple days or a week so all the details can unfold and we can get have a conversation about the full picture. Um, that was one. And then number two, I was just having fun. Like I was having a very good time at the top of the year. And I did not want to break that energy stride with all this deep, dark, heavy stuff. But the spirit hit me this morning and let's talk about it. H&M. I've got one thing to say about that. Top level diversity. I already said that in my when we spoke about Dove, the Dove video campaign some time ago. For me, it's not an issue of boycotting H&M and not shopping at H&M anymore because the reality of the situation is, as with everything else, this will blow over in 30, 60, 90 days. Black people, all people will return to business as usual, including shopping at H&M. And the issue will be water under the bridge, but the underlining issue will still be unresolved. So for me, while a boycott might put a temporary dent in their pocket uh, for right now, child, it's the winter time. Ain't nobody buying that cheap ass shit right now anyway. People is buying real clothes that can keep their ass cool. So they were... <laughs> Listen, I'm not, I'm not even supposed to be going in on nobody right now. Um, the bigger issue is top level diversity. Um, you, you know, I, I've watched all these social media activists, these digital detectives uh, from their keyboards just launching into all these conspiracy theories and all these layered arguments. And for me, it really just is not that complicated. Yes, I am in agreement. That that ad had to pass 17 different desks before it hit the masses. And again, if each and everybody at those desks is white, bright, and light, there was, there was no true cultural system of checks and balances put in place. Um, I do not think by any stretch of the imagination that this was racism, covert or overt. I personally feel that this is the end result of um, lack of top level diversity. I, and call me naive, I refuse to believe somebody in, in, in H&M's corporate structure said, it's Monday. Let me figure out how I can offend a large population of our buying audience and cost the company a whole lot of money. I don't think that's what nobody did. And, and first off, white people care far more about money than they do people. Yeah, they might be racist, but they listen. If they can continue smiling in our face to get our dollar, that's what they're going to do. So for me, you always have to judge somebody's intentions. And for me, I don't. And the reason why I'm not all up in arms and screaming boycott, boycott, boycott is because I don't think someone sat out to intentionally offend. I think this was uh, a secondary effect of lack of top level diversity. That's really all it is to me. That's where it starts and where it stops. As far as I'm concerned, the remedy to the situation would be that black lady that just left Apple, that they hire her for diversity or whatever, they just need to hire her ass or they need to hire somebody or they need to put a system in place where they have a panel of workers sitting around a table and it could be anybody from the janitor to the cashiers. It could be an email form or whatever. And whenever they get ready to put ads out, they run that ad across every culture to see if there are any objections. You know, on the surface, guys, y'all, it was very innocent, in my opinion. Kids play with birds, monkeys giraffes, everything. That's a kid thing. It's a cartoony thing. And what I really do think happened is that the kid got there that day and they said, Little, you know, Chinese Billy, you put on the giraffe shirt. Uh, white Bobby, you put on the zebra shirt. And black boy, hey, here's a monkey shirt left. 
not knowing, not knowing, not thinking. I've seen some arguments that um, basically words and connotations have different meanings in the U.S. versus the, the U.K. And I saw some arguments that said, you know, people in the U.K. did not experience the same uh, type of racism and segregation that we did in the U.S. So they don't have the same word association with black people and monkeys. And perhaps that's why the mother overlooked the whole thing. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. Because I'm not one of those people who always immediately think something is racist. If I was at a photo shoot and they put that on my niece or nephew, um, I don't know. I probably would have been so excited that my niece or nephew was in the ad that it probably would have rolled by me at first. And maybe, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know how I would have felt in that situation. Um, but yeah, I think the answer to that really is top level diversity. So that's the H&M thing, y'all. As, as far as I'm concerned, and quiet as it's kept, the, the, the <laughs> half y'all hoes that scream and boycott is to be, listen, bitch, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Y'all hoes sitting up here with three and four kids. Y'all need them damn $6.99 wash and wear shirts from H&M. Moving right along to something that moves me to chorus a little bit more. Genuine being labeled transphobic because he didn't want to kiss that lady with no dick. Let me tell you something. Transgender people and gay people, y'all wear me the hell out sometimes. Let me tell you something. I completely understand or I'm trying my hardest to understand, but I most definitely support the trans agenda. I do. But I think what trans people in the trans community has to understand that they are far more evolved in their thinking than the rest of the world. And it is going to take a lot of time for the rest of the world to catch up. I'm sorry. It just is what it is. And I'm going to take it a step further and I don't give two damn how y'all feel about it. I understand that trans women are women. I get that. I understand that they are fighting for the world to receive them as women. I totally get that. But you cannot say to somebody, well, if you like women and I'm a woman, then you should like me. People have a right to like women who don't have dicks. Okay, and I think most straight men's biggest concern with, with um, and you can call me saying women with dicks transphobic, I don't give a shit, kiss my ass. It is what it is. I think from a straight man's perspective, and let's not pretend like a cisgendered man's perspective. Okay, you a woman, you're beautiful, and I might be attracted to you, but when you take your clothes off, where you finna put that at? You know, you ain't finna put it all between my legs and in my butt. Then, and, 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 you know, people just try to act like genitalia is not a big part of it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, for me, I'm evolved enough in my thinking and my support for the community to understand, yes, I will rock with the narrative that genitalia does not determine if, you know, you should be treated as a woman, received as a woman, put in a woman's jail cell, be able to put female on your driver's license. But you cannot refute the fact that when it comes to sexual compatibility, that that is a huge part of it. You know what I'm saying? Let's just say, you know, genuine is madly attractive to that to that woman, and, but he not madly attracted to dicks. And I just think it's unfair for people to uh, get labeled transphobic because they don't want to kiss no lady with no titties and no dick. Now I said it, be mad at me, and I'm part of the community, and I'm an ally. And another thing, gay people, while I got y'all on the line, I was reading something the other day that said LGBTQ, I think it said IA at the end. I'm not mistaken. It was two more letters at the end, LGBTQIA. Listen, I understand that we are looking for a phrase that is all-encompassing, but is it me? Or when you reduce things to letters, it was to make it simpler. Let me tell you something. Can we find 
a word, one word, either one or two syllables, that is all encompassing. I'm the biggest sissy out there, baby. I don't even know what LGBTQIA means, yet alone say it. And I'm going to tell you something, because this is the way my gay set up. If ever I went down to dinner and sat down with a bitch and they sat in front of me and started talking about LGBTQIA, I'm getting up from the table. I'm probably going to slap the shit out of you and walk off. That shit is cumbersome. It's too much. It's extra. And I hate the fact that we now live in a community where everybody's jumping on this I feel excluded bandwagon. And I can't tell you how to feel. If you feel excluded, by all means, fight for your rights to party. But, like, don't, in the midst of your exclusion, don't burden everybody with this. So, I mean, listen, at the rate we going, when you gay and disabled, now that person going to need a letter. Or if you gay, queer, bald-headed, now that person going to gonna need a letter. We going to be saying 26 letters, alphabets, by the time it's all said. And I don't even know where the hell this IA came from. I don't know what it means. And I'm sorry, call me an asshole. I have no interest in learning. If LGBTQIA is supposed to be the all-encompassing catchphrase, for any and everything that deviates from cisgendered men and women or heterosexual men and women, then why can't we just find one easy word that means LTGBQIA? Like, for the life of me, I thought the word was queer. Go ahead and accuse me of being ignorant. I guess I need to Google what queer means and figure it out. Okay, if we're not going to use queer, can we just find one word and then when you Wikipedia the word, that word means LGBTQIA. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, y'all are killing me with this and all these separate damn agendas. And I'm sorry, all of this segmentation, in my opinion, is weakening the community. I think... I like us all lumped in there together. Me, personally, I think it's strength in numbers because now what's going on is you got people who are like, fuck the transgenders. That's them over there. I'm not part of that. I'm part of the gay. Well, I'm not part of the gay. I'm part of the bad. Well, I'm, I'm uh, 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 gender fluid and I'm sexually nondescript. And hell, I'm sexually frustrated because Tony... I don't know where he at, but that ain't got nothing to do with this. Uh, we got to add a, another T to the end for Tony and an F for frustrated. You get my drift like, listen, at some point, this shit just got to end. Moving right along to what else got to end. Y'all cut this shit out by talking about Oprah running for president. Now, listen, everybody, Dineva, Dineva, did you see Oprah's speech at the Golden Globes? No, I did not see the speech. Uh, several people emailed it to me. I can go click it right now and see the speech. But quite frankly, I'm just not interested. I love me some Oprah, but right now I'm still in the fun, let's have fun mode, and I just don't want my mind to shift gears and go to this deep place. But here is what I'm going to say, y'all, about gassing up this lady to be president. First and foremost, I like my entertainers to entertain, and I like my politicians to politic. While so many of y'all are mad with Donald Trump being a celebrity, a reality star turned president, voting Oprah into the office would be supporting this same nonsense that we do not like with Donald Trump. Taking people off the street, celebrities, and giving them control of the highest office in the land. I am not in support of that. Now, do I think Oprah would do a phenomenal job? Most definitely, I think she would because she's a very smart woman. And while Oprah might not be well abreast of the issues in terms of foreign affairs and policy affairs and da 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 she is smart enough to stack her team with the people who are willing to do the work and have the expertise. So I think that Oprah, listen, I really do think that if you can be a successful CEO of a big company, that you can be a successful CEO of this country. She's charismatic, she's got the money, she's got no, you know, no direct political ties with one group or another as far as I know. Um, 
So yes, I think Oprah would be great at anything, but I think we have to be careful of the precedent that we're setting. Moreover, I think Oprah is far more effective in the private sector. I'm sorry, Oprah has her renegade moments when she says what the hell she want to say and she get it done and she gets it done with her diamond, with her money. Oprah cannot do that if she is the president. Moreover, if Oprah became president, it would be the end of everything that we know to be Oprah. Listen, white folks love, everybody love Oprah right now because, you know, political views aside, you can pretend like you don't know where she lies. She is Oprah. You see what I'm saying? Oprah get in office today or tomorrow to white America, to these hillbilly uh, people that voted Trump in, she becomes an extension of Barack Obama. I can assure you, a large part of Oprah's white constituency will pull out of watching her channel, and Oprah will go from everybody loves Oprah to everybody hates Chris, okay? We need Oprah to stay in that everybody loves Oprah so she can keep doing the work that God put her on this earth to do. She is far more effective in the lane that she is in right now, and she can ride that lane for 90, 60, 100 more years, because you know her and Gail got the potion right now. They got the potion to stay alive forever. Death becomes her. Okay, Oprah got the money. Her, huh? Magic Johnson, all that. And y'all think Maya Angelou dead. She ain't dead. She ran Oprah House. She ran Oprah House in the basement somewhere, making neck bones and butter beans. Um, so y'all leave that lady alone. Did Tom Hanks, y'all know America voted Tom Hanks. It's like, they did a survey. He is the most likable person like in the country or some off-ass statistic like that. Uh, just like I'm the most sexiest woman from Sports Illustrated, uh, but I'm from an 09 edition. That's all right, I'm gonna go out again for 2019. You laughing, bitch, you know? That's why I don't got these backgrounds and these makeup and this hair together, because I'm coming for Holly Berry ass and Blake Shelton, baby. I can play the man or the woman. Pick your choice. Um, leave that lady alone out of there. This, this mudslide done just hit this lady house. Uh, um, huh, Oprah, her and Gail going through turmoil. Maya Angelou died and they eat Oprah box. Oprah got a lot going on. Tyler Perry done fell out with her. They, they got a lot. Leave that lady alone and let her be a fan. Iyala Van Zant be having threesomes right there with her and Oprah and, and Maya and, um, Alice Walker and Whoopi Goldberg, all of them be right there. Let that lady see. Uh uh. If, if Oprah was in the Oval Office, it's going to be too much record of all them dykes coming in and out of there. And Oprah Bitness going to be all on the front, on the front lines. That's not what we need. What I need from her is understanding. And the only way she going to get an understanding is she remain the queen of media like I'm about to become. Anyway, that's a girl. That's my thoughts. This was supposed to be serious and somewhere around the world, somewhere along the way, it became about poetic lesbians, but that's fine because we got to add PL to the end of the LGBTQIA T for Tony PL for poetic lesbians. And with that being said, girl, I'll call you when they give me some more letters to add to the end of that alphabet. Bad.